at this point with haying, I'm kind of at a no fuss stage. Hey, we have a square baler right over here. You can see that. There you go. But yeah, that square baler we've had since we bought this place, it works. But when you are talking about fussiness, square balers are super duper fussy. We have a 40 horsepower tractor, which should be able to run that thing, no problem. But the tractor doesn't have low gears and it makes it a lot easier to operate one of those with low gears. We found a uh, round baler and it's a smaller round baler. It does about four foot by four foot round bales. And I actually may make my bales smaller than that. If there are, um, you know, people who would like small round bales and your neighbors of ours, just let me know. But I'm thinking about doing some round bales in the 50 to 100 pound range. So it'd be kind of like buying large square bales. If there's a shortage on square bales, you know, hopefully this would be a good supplement to it. You don't have to put the whole thing, the giant round bale out there. You can put a small round bale out there. So if you like that idea, comment below, because I'm thinking about doing that. But the round baler is going to make my life a heck of a lot easier. Uh, square bales just aren't worth it. People aren't willing to pay the premium on the square bales. It's not worth the trouble. You have to have, you have to hire additional labor because you have to pick up all the bales and then you have to store them properly. It's a very fickle process. Whereas with round bales, you know, the smaller round bales will probably store undercover, but the larger round bales, we could actually leave them out in the field and then you just peel away the outer shell and the hay underneath is good. So the, the larger round bales don't actually go bad. Um, whereas the, the square bales can go bad if they're stored improperly. That's where we are with this. I'm on my way to Clatt Brothers in Siler City and uh, we'll see what kind of deal I can work out. I'm hoping that I can work out a pretty good deal because I'd also really like to have a hay tether, especially if I'm going to use a sickle bar mower. So if I can talk him down enough on this baler, I might be able to get that tether I wanted. Haying equipment is not cheap, and if you want it in good working order, it's not cheap. You can't buy it online, you can buy it secondhand off people, but it hasn't been serviced. I don't recommend that unless you're extremely mechanically savvy because these things will break down regardless of the condition. It's, you're gonna have an issue with it out in the field. So you might as well eliminate how many issues you have by getting the good stuff. This baler I'm getting is from the 90s versus that one, which is from like the 60s and 70s. So I'm gonna be going up light years in technology here. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that it does the job for me. Um, it's got a mechanical tie arm, it's a case. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of excited as long as I can talk them down on the price. Okay, this is our new Case 8420. It's not new, but it's new to us. Basically with these, the twine is in here and it feeds up through your tensioner here. Actually, I've got a little bit too loose there. Why would it be better to do it that way or this way? It might be better that way. All right, and then it goes down through here and open these up. Open this up. Then it comes out right down through here. Now, that's way too much sticking out. You want about 12, you want about 12 to 15 inches. So I'm gonna come in and Still might want it a little longer. Here we go. About 12 to 15 inches. Just let that hang. Now on ours, we have an electric motor. Um, on some, it might be a string that you pull, but on ours is an electric motor. So the cord goes up to the tractor. I have a switch up on the tractor that I can switch. And what it does is this arm right here will pull out and sweep across the hay bale. And so then I'm gonna hold it over on that side for about 10 wraps and then slowly work it back all the way across and then hold it on this side for a little bit. And then it should, as I move it back in, cut the twine. I'm not sure how it's gonna cut the twine, but in theory, it'll cut the twine and then you have your hydraulics you push your hydraulic lever, which is right there, and it lifts open the back 
and drops the bail out the back. It has some fun little springy ramps back here. That'll go down. It's PTO driven. Need to hook up the PTO, but I need to pull it straight first. A very basic design, if you think about it. It's got a bunch of belts in there that spin with the PTO and the gears. Here's the, the hydraulic lever that I installed to use this. And here you go. Pretty basic. It's kind of like a chain setup. Um, I heard some guys say that there was a belt in here. There is a belt. There's a belt down there. But very, very basic. That's it. I'm going to go give it a test drive. Oh, I need to close the doors on the other side. See these pistons here, these are your hydraulic pistons. So this, you know, this whole back piece will go up and then drop the roll off those ramps. This is all theoretical to me right now because this is my first time operating it. But from this video, you will see how easy it is to operate one of these for the first time. I do have a manual. I read over the manual because I could not find a video online that explained to me how these actually operate. So I'm going to tell you how it actually operates. Because most of us little people haven't been farming our entire lives. We have to figure this stuff out on our own. Case International 8420 hooked up to a 40 horsepower. Uh, Actually, it's 38 horsepower, Ford 3000. 